Encryption has become an ubiquitous occurrence now. The good guys want to protect their data and the bad guys want to hide their work. In this video, I will give you a brief introduction to how encryption behaves on Linux and on the fourth extended file system. Encryption can happen at the disk level or at the file system level. In block device encryption, the whole storage device is encrypted, whereas in file system encryption, only portions of the file system are encrypted like some files and directories. For file system encryption, the Linux kernel has to understand that the file system on top of it has some encrypted data. Linux kernel supports encryption, but it is not activated by default. The kernel needs to be recompiled with an option that allows encryption and then file system encryption can be done. There is some reading material following this video which discusses file system encryption. Now, I will give you an idea about block device encryption or disk encryption. We will be using a 50 MB partition on a 2 GB drive for this demo. When we talk about disk or block device encryption, it means a selected partition on the disk is completely encrypted with a secret passphrase. Whenever the file system on the partition needs to be accessed, it would mount only after the passphrase is given. Let us have a quick demo of the same. We will use this utility that comes with Ubuntu for this. Here on this 2 GB USB drive, let us create a 50 MB partition and allow it to be encrypted. We specify the size of the partition here. In the type of partition, we will choose LUX plus EXT4. LUX is Linux Unified Key Setup, which is a block device encryption specification that is built into the Linux kernel. The moment this option is chosen, we would be prompted for a name for the partition and a passphrase with which it can be encrypted. Let us give the name as top secret and the passphrase as secret. In reality, you should choose a better key for disk encryption. And we are done. Now, I will unplug the drive from my computer and connect it back. Let us check the output of FDisk. We can see our device is SDB with one partition. To find out if a partition has been encrypted with LUX and if it has been encrypted with LUX, to get information about it, we will use crypt setup command. This command needs to be run with root permissions. We can see that AES cipher has been used for encryption. Now, when we take a forensic image of this partition SDB1, it would be totally encrypted and it would be impossible to perform any forensic procedures on it. You can view a UUID here. This is a unique number for this partition. When the user wants to read or write data from this partition, the physically encrypted partition is mapped 
to a logically decrypted partition on the user's computer. This is achieved by a device mapper built into the Linux kernel. Let me show you. We will type the passphrase secret. Now we can mount our file system. Data can be read from it and written to it. Now let us check the output of FDisk again. Aha! We have a new entry for a device mapper with a specific UUID. The device mapper in the Linux kernel is handling a logical decrypted partition on our computer so that we can work with the block device. This value here is the UUID of the device which we saw from the previous output. To acquire a forensic image of the encrypted device, we will refer to the decrypted device mapped partition. Once the image is acquired, then you can carry on with the forensic procedures that we have discussed so long. The catch here is knowing the encryption passphrase. Some encrypted disks may be programmed to wipe themselves clean when an incorrect passphrase is entered more than three times. The forensic investigator needs to be aware of that. Some other tools that perform disk encryption are Veracrypt and GNU Privacy Guard.